What made you change your mind? Yin. He, uh, he had a child. We his Mohawk wife. He was. He told Marsley. Didn't say more about it. He fights for them because they are his family. His allegiances to them. And my allegiance is to him. I think it's the right thing to do. All the way from Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to Outlander Cast. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. My name is Blake, and I've always wanted one of those, you know, sigil stamp wax oh, things. Oh, I've several. Have you really? Yes. What the hell? I'm missing out. Yeah, I actually used um, one uh, when I sent invitations to my senior recital. <laughs> of course you my did. My senior saxophone <laughs> recital. I Yes, no! I made... You senior saxophone <laughs> recital? <laughs> I made bookmarks so people could book the dates. Such a dork. And I hand stamped them and it was teal oh. with like a treble clef on it. And then I put oh, them in envelopes. Oh. And then I had a gold <laughs> wax seal with the letter M. <laughs> this is why Blake and I would not have dated in college. Not at all. I thought it was very special. People treat their senior oh. recitals like how you treat a wedding, like you need invitations oh, and you need food. It's a big to-do. Yeah, you're all a bunch of dorks, too. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you be careful, man. You be careful. Them's fighting oh, words. Oh, man. That was great. Oh, well, thank what you. What a way to start the podcast. Oh, my gosh. Just, just tooling on Mary. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how we're still together. But I will tell you this. We've got some friends who think that our podcast is very great. You said it's a great way to start a podcast. And we want to, I want to shout them out for a hot second because we've had some recent new reviews on Apple Podcasts. We've okay. got a slew of them come on in. We, I want to thank, um, Anna Siali, that's the username on Apple Podcasts, saying, my very favorite podcast, you to rock this out of the park. I love your passion for the show and your insight to all things happening within Outlander. Also, your very entertaining delivery. Love you both to the moon and back. Thank Aww, you so much. And then we have you. Maura W. who said, Outlander Cast has returned. Outlander has returned, and that means the return of my favorite podcast, Outlander Cast. Mary and Blake offer insightful analysis of both the technical aspects of the show and the story elements. It's the highlight of my week to listen to the breakdown of each episode and to hear their outlandish theories about what might come next. Awesome. They're also all around delightful people who bring laughter and light to their nerd clan community across their amazing podcasts. And wow. It- goes on a bit more, but I want to thank you and I want to remind you all that if you haven't yet taken the time to leave us a review in Apple Podcasts, whether or not that's the app that you use, um, it means a lot to us. And each of these podcast reviews that we see, it's like a little hug over the interwebs. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so incredibly much for all of you who have taken the time and all of you who will take the time to leave a little written review. It means the world to Blake and I. Yes. All right. Marvin, you ready to get into the show? I. Uh, Yes. Or do you want to do your? What, how would you like to proceed? Because you've added a little, a little something to this. Oh well, I like um, to you, have a little bit. You of want to do the recap, recap beforehand? Yeah. Have you found my music yet? No, I still haven't done that yet. 
Shame. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree. All right. So um, the, just the little mini recap, basically what they give you on like TV Guide, I guess. Do they Shame. make TV Guide anymore? I assume they There's do. There's zero. I mean, actually, you know, I bet you they do. Yeah, I assume they do it's too. probably just an online publication. So this, of course, though. being episode two of season six, um, Jamie struggles with his first request as an Indian agent. Roger presides over an unusual funeral. Marcelie gives birth. However, the joy is short-lived when a discovery is made. Ooh, dun, dun, dun. So very. So before like... we get into the rest of the show, we want to remind you that Blake and I can be found by searching Miriam Blake on Facebook and Instagram, YouTube. We are on Twitter, but we're honestly not super active there. So apologies to our Twitter friends. Uh, but we are very, sure. very busy with our podcasting schedule. I will say, those of you listening and watching in Lifetime, um, we have had a lot of illness continue into our family. We've had not only uh, my illness get just really ramped up and weird, <laughs> but our little lass has been sick. So one of the things with this being a mom and pop podcast shop that we have to be able to be flexible in regards to our family. Um, so if you're not on our complimentary text reminder list, you are going to want to get on that you can find the information on our social media channels and i will also tell you a little bit more about that a little later all right let's get into the show let's do it well marvin this episode was number 602 called allegiance and you know why we're talking about the allegiance that Jamie shares to pretty much everybody that surrounds him and what he has to do as the really the leader of the Ridge and how that focuses primarily on Ian and then Ian's allegiance to his family, uh, a child that he has apparently had. Um, and obviously is probably no longer around, uh, and how he, Ian, feels allegiance to uh, the Cherokee, uh, though he was Mohawk. Um, <clears throat> the writer was Steve Kornacki and Allison Evans. Uh, Steve Kornacki has written shows for uh, Chance, Bates Motel, and Boardwalk Empire, which is that great show on HBO um, about the early mafia uh, actually run by Terrence Winter. So that's that's some pretty serious credentials that he has there. In Bates Motel was actually written by um, Carlton Cuse, who was oh. the former showrunner of Lost. Interesting. Yes, yes, I know. Yes, very, very interesting. Oh, yes. We have to go back, Kate. So uh, anytime I can mention Lost in my life, I will. Uh, and it... <laughs> He and Allison Evans are actually partners in their writing. It's actually a re relatively new partnership. They have both written on Bates Motel and the show Chance as well. The director, once again, was Kate Cheeseman. She was the person who directed the first episode. And she also has uh, some other episodes of television that she's directed, but mostly known for uh, three episodes of Call the Midwife. Mm. So keep that in mind as we go forward. Marvin, what do you have for your kilt rating? My kilt rating. So, of course, we do kilt ratings on a scale of one to five. And I'm going to give this one a full point eight, which I believe is what I gave the initial episode for mm -hmm. the season. Uh, so, a solid four point eight. I'm leaving room because I know of things that I'm going to want to be able to have wiggle room for. So, yes. I'm enjoying these episodes a great deal. Four point eight. Uh, okay. All right. Fair. Fair. Uh, I'm going to give this one a four, three. Mm -hmm. Um, I liked it. Uh, still some more setup where we're now, uh, oddly enough, think of this, Mary, a quarter of the way through Stop. the season. That is a swear. <laughs> I'm so sad. <laughs> Wait, shall I, shall I play that sound again, Mary? Shall I play the most important sound? Shame. Oh, yes. I wish there was so many more. So we are yes, a quarter okay. of the way through the season, mm -hmm. and you can feel that. You can feel yes. that there are things that have been introduced, characters that we have come to know, and there are some conflicts that I think are coming. Um, but we'll get there in a little bit. But what, what I love about it most is that there are... <sighs> There are things that are happening in the Ridge that are just not good. We talked last episode of being gilded. Mm -hmm. We're getting that similar feeling here again. And everybody, 
everybody is going through some sort of PTSD. And that is awesome. That makes for great television. Yes. So I like that. I give it a 4-3 just because it didn't blow my doors off the way that I wanted it to. I, I felt like episode one was a great launching point. Okay. And it didn't, mm, you know, so I'm giving it a 4-3. Okay. All right, what do you got for your GBG? I that. You're good, you're bad, that. and you're great. All right, so my good for this episode is the Marceline Fergus labor scene. Uh, which I know probably a lot of people have conflicting viewpoints about, but I will talk about that later, but that is actually my good. Okay. Um, My bad. (laughs) It's nothing big. Once again, I gave this episode a 4.8. I'm really enjoying things, but I just love seeing, maybe it's because of This Is Us. I think it is because of This Is Us. So for those of you who don't know, in This Is Us, a fire happens in their house and viewers of the show are constantly like, what was the fire caused by? What happened? Like, why was this fire here? So book readers, you know, we are time travelers and we we see the future. But <laughs> I just think it's fun to be watching these episodes to see all of the ways that fire potentially could be happening. For, yeah. for, um, especially if you're just, uh, if you are just a show watcher. So I loved how close the ether was to an open flame in last episode. And I love that no Brie is inventing Natchez. So... I'm just a nerd and I'm sitting here seeing how many different little possibilities of there being a fire because that has been stated in mm-hmm. the show. That is the entire reason that Brie traveled through time was because she wants to prevent a fire happening and killing her parents. So yeah. to me, I'm like, well, that's flammable. Look at you, now you can move. You know, so it's just, I don't know, it's just interesting. Yep. And so that's my bad is that Brie knows that there could be fire instead of, you know, making a fire extinguisher. <laughs> she makes matches. She makes matches. <laughs> oh, oh. So it's not anything bad of the show. Mom. It's just my brain, you know, being like, I'm going to circle all the things that yeah. could be wrong. Yeah. And then my great is just seeing this family continue to evolve. You know, uh, like so many of you, I did a big rewatch of of the series, you know, from the beginning to present. Um, And, you know, it really does start with this disjointed, you know, just Jamie and Claire being thrown into having to be married together. And then Brie not even knowing her father and, you know, traveling through time, doing all these different things. And everyone was in different places, different times. And now to be able to see this family unit, established and truly acting as a village together Mm -hmm. how roger can talk to fergus like a brother you know um how claire refers to marshley as her daughter oh like all these things that i just love seeing this congealed family absolutely great i I just know right (laughs) i'm a little thrown off because i just saw something in your notes that (laughs) i just i did not anticipate (laughs) Sorry. Um, yeah, it's, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know you just saw what I was talking about. You're welcome, Blake. And that, listener, you're you're in for a show today. I'm, I'm just going to no, tell you. No, no, no. I may not be reading the notes the way that they are, Blake, well, so but do you, not worry. Just, we'll just, you'll just know that when you hear something, you'll, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, my good. My good is the moment that Jamie goes to speak to Tom Christie about the church. I just love the fact that he goes there and lays down the law. Yes. But it's, I remember my dad always used to say something to me where it was, if you got to tell somebody you're the boss, then you ain't the boss. And I love the fact that Jamie doesn't have to say that he's the boss. Correct. It doesn't mean that Tom Christie's going to listen, but it just means that Jamie knows how to lead. And he goes in there and says, this is my place. I know you think that like you got to build a house for God before you build one for yourself, but we don't do that here. So I want to let you know that you're going to do what I want you to do. Mm-hmm. And not only are you going to do it, you're going to be happy doing it. So we're going to make that a meeting house and make sure that you follow the guidelines that we've set as fellow Masons. Masons. Cool handshake, wink, wink, notch, notch, code word, boom. Yeah, like you, like we're gonna do this, and you're gonna do this, and you're you're not gonna say anything about it. How's that sound? Great. Put some window panes in there too while you're at it. Oh. Like, 
Oh, oh. And, and Sam Hewen in this moment, I, I, we, I know we've talked about it. Sam Hewen has really grown into the role of Jamie. Um, he has come a long way since those early days. And I especially love that we get to see Sam Hewen as old, older Jamie. Yeah. After we've watched Men in Kilts, where we get to see Sam Hewen as Sam Hewen. Yeah, right. Which is not older Jamie. <laughs> the opposite of older Jamie. Sam Hewen is like the happy Labrador puppy. Oh, yeah. Whereas older Jamie Frog is, and Toad. <laughs> no, he's not Graham McTavish no, as know. an older, but he's just he's just like a solid observant. Yeah. yeah. But don't mess with me. Yeah, like we're gonna you're gonna do this and you're gonna put window panes in that. Yeah. Like that's what you're gonna do. He's like shadow, but from from um that oh, movie with the from- dogs. <laughs> What's the dogs movie? Oh, 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 um, <laughs> Oh, what the heck is the name I of that think it's movie? It's a three or four word movie. Oh, and then dogs run away. And then they come back home, like the non hurt dying shadow. Yeah, it's um, oh, but the golden retriever. Homeward that's bound. Just homeward bound. Yeah, oh, no, so I was totally off. Too. Everybody, everybody in there was syllables. screaming at their radio for like a minute there, being like, "It's homeward bound, guys." <laughs> so he's like, he's like Shadow. Yeah, he's definitely like Shadow, Shadow in the first half bound. of the movie. Yes, yeah. totally, yeah. totally, Before totally. He falls. Uh, so I love that. The bad. <laughs> so sad. When the, Shadow gets hurt. the bad, and it's not necessarily the way that this is written or, or the show is written or anything. It's just the, you know how when they transition from scene to scene, they're kind of showing like these scene setters, where it's like a a, a big shot. They've of, done that a lot. I know, but. And, I, and I've noticed this for the past – actually, I'll tell you when I started noticing it very specifically. It was last season. Yeah. When – well, season four really is when they moved – when they moved from – in quotes uh, – from Scotland to – America. America. Okay. Whenever they're transitioning from one scene, like if it's Jamie and Tom Christie, and then they're going to, to – Malva and Claire, right? Mm-hmm. They don't smash cut to it. They they have like this almost B roll that they're putting in between to be like, okay, we're changing scenes here. Maybe we didn't notice it. I'm gonna have to look back at like the first couple of seasons because we always used to say that Scotland was a character in and of itself. Certainly, and. Faux America, aka Scotland, Faux America. that they're trying to make like North Carolina, yeah. is not a character. No, no, not. And at maybe all. they're trying to say, still keep pretending that this is this is North America. Yeah, well, I guess. Or, I don't do, know. Do you know who does this very well? As a matter of fact, no. Is the Last Kingdom? Okay. The Last Kingdom is excellent at transitioning from one scene to another, but using the the organic mm-hmm. of that uh, of the setting to move to the next scene mm-hmm. whereas in outlander right now it feels like we're going to show this pretty picture of leaves and a river and then we're going to cut into the house like the big house with malva and I'm not bothered by it I am because it do, it doesn't we can f- tell. <laughs> it doesn't feel organic. It just feels like they found stock footage on Adobe, and they're like, "Okay, let's find pretty footage, and we'll put it in there." And and it, it felt very, very um, apparent okay. in in this episode and in previous episodes. But my great, my great is when Claire comes back from talking with Marsali about Fergus. She goes into the house and she hears Doctor Rawl. You know, like, and it's the voice and she goes and she, you know, she does the anti dare and, uh, and she starts huffing some, uh, huffing, huffing some glue again. And, uh, but it's not the fact that she heard the voice, but when she closes the door, there's a guy's silhouette behind the door in, in the glass and you can see the silhouette in the glass. Let's get weird, baby. Let's get weird. I love when shows get weird. We oh we had a, a great talk about this on the Last Kingdom podcast recently about a crow mm-hmm. and things happening, just getting weird. Let's get weird and let's put silhouettes and glass doors and have voices. And, and I am so happy with that when I saw that. And it happened so quickly that I'm like, did I just see what I saw? 
and I had to go back. Yeah. And, and I said, oh, I did see what I saw. That is awesome. I love like it. I love when shows do stuff like that. You have to screenshot and put it up on our social it so just, people can see what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so go back and take a look at that. They will. Like. And it's it's so great. All right, so what do you got for the rest of this episode, my love? Um, You know, I would be glad for you to take me in the direction that I feel like you wanted to start off. But I just... I just wanted to note for all the fellow book readers that I'm just so excited and interested to see how things work out in such a short season. You know, as you just said, like, like we're already a quarter of the way through because this is only an eight episode season Mm -hmm. and having done rewatches and having had such a gloriously long season one, for example, um, to now kind of do a really quickened version, each episode will be feeling almost like a little mini movie. And a lot of things from the sixth book were put inside the fifth television, the fifth, fifth season of the television show. So, um, we do already have the titles of it, of, of all the shows coming up, but I'm just interested to see how they end up continuing to move things forward since we are already at a fourth and in two more weeks we'll be at the halfway mark yes so like you were saying you know we had a crazy momentum taking off from the first episode this episode i would agree with you was a bit more uh home-based you know we had a lot of clear as a healer we had a lot of setting down or establishing relationships, you know, how this family unit is working. And it was a bit more muted. Yes, but I don't think that that's a bad thing. Oh, no, 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 no. we need it for solid foundation. I think that that's what this episode can give us. Once again, to solidify the foundation so we can grow on yeah. the Jamie, Tom Christie experience. So we can grow on how the rest of the family, honestly, are going to be interacting with one Do another. Do you want to know... Do you want to know something that, you know, I'm going to give you two outlandish theories of the week today. So I'm going to give you an early one right now. All right. We all know that Malv is Dakota Fanning weird. Okay. Okay. Like there's like great weird. Like I just have to really focus on something. (laughs) Yeah. There's like great weird (laughs) when it comes to, uh, you know, Dr. Rawlings and seeing the silhouette. In the, in the glass pane. And then okay. there's Dakota Fanning weird. Okay. When you're just like... You can just say Malva weird. No, no. It's Dakota Fanning weird. We all know what it is. Because as soon as I say it, everybody knows what it is. Not everybody. No, no. People everybody don't does. don't know Dakota Fanning Yes, they well. do. Okay. They continue. do. You want to know why? Because she's weird. Okay. All right. Christina Ritchie. Uh, oh, yeah. She... Christina Ritchie was Dakota Fanning before Dakota yes. Fanning was Dakota Fanning. So I'm just Fanning. saying, like, a lot, if people haven't seen Dakota Fanning stuff, just think Christina Ritchie. But Christina Who Ricci would have made weird. a great Malva. I, oh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, continue. I, so when and whenever I think of the- Like cr- who kisses a ghost? Let's be real. Oh, yeah. Okay, like, I would if that ghost looked if, like if that, that in If life. that ghost was Patrick Swayze, then you're definitely kissing Oh my ghost. God, our generation grew up thinking ghosts were hot. <laughs> <laughs> Of course I want a ghost in my house. No wonder our Jen had like Ouija board sleepovers. And oh my gosh. We, will, we were messed up. We like loved Goosebumps books. Like, please say the ghost is hot. Please say the ghost is hot. Okay, continue. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick Swayze. Oh. We can just blame him for that. Uh, and the cute boy that Casper ends up turning into. Yeah, well, true. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Oh, and, and Binks. What's Binks? Binks from uh, uh, Hocus Pocus. Binks turns into the yeah. kid who's hot. Yeah. Like, yeah. Come on, man. Okay, continue. We were we, we were into some weird okay, things. Okay, so you're talking about Malva. This all right, is how so, this all began. I'm just staring. I, I could just... The, I mm. Words. Malva is so freaking weird, and she, I think, wants to be Claire in the worst way. Mm. And... Her her dad, it, like Tom like Christie, like she puts the lotion in the basket. Yeah, kind like of, I think she would wear Claire cool, skin. Cool. Okay. Like she's like she sees Claire and she sees the opposite of what her dad wants her to be. Okay. And she is in on that. So, and, what is your outlandish theory aside from the fact that we all can understand that Melva's a little weird? I'm kind of getting like a oh um. I'm kind of getting like a, oh, what was the name of that movie with, um, 
We're we're not good with knowing movie names right now, Blake. Oh, I know. Um, Can you describe it to me? Hold on. It was oh gosh, uh, it was Drew Barrymore. Pictionary. And uh, hold on. I, I think it was Ever After. Never been po- kissed. It was Poison Ivy. Oh, I never watched that one. No, yeah, it was Poison Ivy. It was a the Batman one where, movie. No, 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 no. It was okay. Drew Barrymore, and she was the babysitter, and she wanted to be like Tom Skerritt's wife. Oh, we've seen that kind of a movie all the time. I know. And I'm getting a Poison Ivy, Drew Barrymore, but with vibe, vibe with, with Malva. Interesting. And like, I don't know if she's going to like go full Poison Ivy and like try to try to kill uh, uh, Cheryl Ladd, the mother. But like. Kill who? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't think she's going to go full Poison Ivy. And kill who? Kill Claire. Okay. But. The way that her dad, like when her dad went to go give her the give her the strap, and it didn't work, I saw that Dakota Fanning weird girl give a smile that was like it sent chills up my spine. Mm. And I, 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 this girl's horrifying. Interesting, interesting, interesting. She is horrifying, and the way that she just looks at Claire and she. Like it wants to be a part of all this, all the things, and she wants to learn. And like you think that's all cute, and it's great. It ain't. Mm-hmm. It ain't cute, and it ain't great because what she's trying to do is be poison ivy. Okay, that's what I feel like. That's that's what Ooh, I feel I'm like. Glad you got that off your chest, Blake. So market zero, dude. Market zero because it's happening. We're going full poison ivy. Interesting, Blake. <laughs> and for those of you who are new to us, I just say interesting when Blake gives his outlandish theories because he hasn't read the books, and I know way too much. But, but speaking so. of speaking of Claire, that moment when she calls Marcely her daughter, spectacular. And to think really? to think how their relationship began and where it is now. I mean, it started with Marcely calling Claire a whore. Oh yeah, not great, Bob. No, that was that was. That was a little tough. <laughs> that was a little tough. But I, I, I love that the show has invested time into this relationship. I remember last episode we talked about buying Roger and Bree. Like, do you buy Roger and Bree? Um, I, I still, oddly enough, think that there is some contention there about how much we buy them. But I absolutely buy into the emotional math and I buy into the relationship that they've established between Marceline and Claire. We'll go back to Roger in a minute because I think this is actually a very stellar – uh, episode for him and his development that I would I was hoping people like you who are not you know at the forefront of the Roger Choo Choo train yep. that yeah you might feel a little bit more but as we let's hang with Marsley for a little bit okay so here we are and I love how just cognizant she is of her body and knowing of course that she wants Fergus there even though they're having their issues so she's you know in labor and understanding that things feel very differently and I loved how the whole family just went into action. Yeah, she's sitting there. Oh, this is different. Everyone goes into full action. Uh, Roger, of course, goes and we'll we'll put the pin in him to go talk to Fergus. But Marceline knows that she wants her husband by her side. But also Marceline knows that Fergus has got some tricks up his one sleeved hand, one hand sleeve. (laughs) Because he's only got one hand. So it felt kind of weird to say sleeve. Hey, two hands are better than one. <laughs> so thanks, Lizzie. So I just loved that you know he comes on in Ugh. and starts sucking at a tatas and playing and, around. And the way that Mary wrote that no, in the it's, notes, please, please, please. No, no, no. I'm so, just saying that was what I started laughing at because yes. the way that Mary wrote that in the notes was far different than yes. what you just heard. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, <laughs> so Much I loved more how he was saying this and. Um, it was just such a shock. And I've loved seeing the reactions on the internet yeah. about this particular scene. And then how, you know, everyone gives them some uh, private some time. Because obviously we then hear Marceli being very pleased. Mm-hmm. And it's, once again, the reactions online of people being like, oh my gosh, this is so crass. Or loved like, why it. would they do loved this? Loved everything about it. So for those of you who don't know, when I was pregnant with our first, I really went hardcore into like the crunchy route. Ooh. I Ooh. 
Whoa. wanted um, the natural birth. I did some kind of hypnosis class where I would hypnotize myself <laughs> to not feel pain. Bubble Didn't work. Of peace. Yeah, a bubble of well, the bubble of peace bubble I believe in. Uh, but it was supposed to feel like a warm hug. It didn't. didn't. It ain't no warm hug. It didn't for me. Uh-uh. I, I'm not good at hypnotizing myself. I oh guess. man! But within all of this, we hired, had a doula, and we had learned that yes, yes nipple stimulation can help. Yes, um, and also that what gets the baby in can get the baby out. Yes. And I have used that phrase with so many friends who've been pregnant Mm -hmm. where I've said, you know, you can use your breast pump ahead Mm -hmm. of time, you know, like towards the very end, like you can start to do that because it will have the nipple nipple stimulation um, that as uh, unsexy as it sounds, that actually having sex um, or just being stimulated Mm -hmm. can really help get things moving and there is some research that says, I hope you're not listening in the car with your kids, but like let's be this realist as Outlander, that semen can actually help dilate the cervix. Mm -hmm. So um, so whether Fergus and Marsley were were actually having full out intercourse or if, if Fergus was pleasing and doing things with his hand to Marsley and like doing clitoral stimulation, like all of that is legitimately true and can work. And so it's just, it was very interesting for me because we watched the show and I don't think either of us thought anything of it because we had been told all that. Yeah. And we may or may not have utilized some of those aspects (laughs) to bring children into the world. And so yeah, when I saw it, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, like, well done, Fergus. Like, that's awesome. Great you job. You went to Mary's hippie mother class. <laughs> like, you knew the tricks. And I have. I've told people these these methods. Yeah. So for us to watch it, I loved that Fergus was able to vocalize. You know, I, I lived in a brothel, and I saw people do this, and it does work. And I find it so interesting that Claire, because of the time frame that she was a doctor and she was in medicine, that something like that would have been seen as crass and perverse. And like women didn't even have like their husbands in the hospital with sure. them often, you know, when this was all happening. So um, I just thought it was so great to have Fergus be the one that had this knowledge and for Marcia to be, Marcia to be like, yeah, we did this with the last baby. Give us some peace. <laughs> I am having a good time. Yes. <laughs> Not to say that childbirth is inherently sexually arousing. There are some people, these are the real magic people, who find childbirth orgasmic. There are magical unicorn people. Can you imagine? All the women who have delivered babies are right now like, screw them. But there are a few women. If I had like a wow sound. Yeah, I know. I should should get, uh, what's his name? (laughs) Wow. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's a thing for some people. Obviously not very common. Um, But I just love that Marshall said, yes, we've tried this method before with our our last child. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. It oh, works. Owen Wilson. That's just, uh, why can I re- why can I not recall wow, anything wow, right now? Wow, 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 yeah, wow. So I just need to get that out there that I loved that it was Fergus who brought this knowledge that Marsley backed him up and that it was a beautiful bonding experience. But I did not expect the backlash. Uh, particularly from people who are like, oh my God, that was like too much. No, and I'm great. like, you watch Outlander. Right. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and this is actually, in my opinion, it's beautiful because it is sexual, but it's also helping Marcelie like, yeah. not feel as much pain. It's, like it's healing, helping the like, baby come yeah, out. Yeah, so for those of you who didn't know that this is like really, really, really a real thing, it is. Yeah. It is. Do a little Googling. It's flipping fantastic. Uh, I, and there are certain things that happen in this episode that are just these little Nice, fun. If you yourself are pregnant, I'm telling you. Oh, what gets it in gets it out. That's when yep. you when you're towards the end. Yep. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> just take that information. And if do with you it are what a mother who has a pregnant daughter, you may just want to share this episode. As I feel like it'd be really awkward yeah, for right. you to tell them, like, okay, <laughs> have your partner stimulate your nipples. Yeah. Or clitoris. <laughs> Okay, so so there are there are a couple. Just need of things. to get that off my chest. No, you did a great. You did great, and you know, I, I just saying. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are a couple of great, fun bits of writing in this episode, and Mary, you just touched on one of them, and that is 
the how to get the baby out and what Fergus recognizes he needs to do. And that is part of what we talked about as it relates to Fergus and Marsley and their relationship. Like there are beautiful, great things about it, but they're just in a season. Well, no, not a season, but they're in this really hard place right now. And clearly Fergus's reaction to Henri Christian was was that was definitely not great, Bob. Like oof, not great. Broke my heart. Um, so you can see how one one thing goes to another. Uh, Roger going to speak to, and in this scene, Roger's beard. Oh, oh! If there could effect. be like the best beard scene oh. it would be when he's reprimanding Fergus and maybe it's because we're all so proud of Roger you know what it is it's like the wings from his mustache that like that do it for me those those little wings it's like he could fly for away for as bad as some wings are I gotta wigs are I gotta tell you this beard I think that beard's real I think so too because but like it must have been oiled and combed <laughs> and he must sleep on a silk Pillowcase. He just wraps his face in a silk pillowcase with yeah. a breathing tube. Oh, good lord! That beard. <laughs> that beard looks the, so good. If Roger gets caught in a stiff wind, he's gonna be he's gonna be in Africa. <sighs> <laughs> I wonder what it's like when he's like eating soup, though. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the beast swarm, uh, s- s- a little sponge. Um, R- Roger, the way that he says, "Trust me, you're gonna want to be there." I know, oh. like. That is a great bit of texture. Another mm-hmm. great bit fun texture is... Why is that fun texture? No, no. Another great okay. bit of fun texture is Major McDonald being allergic to cats. Oh, they heard us when we complained about the lack of Adso in oh, season yeah. five. Adso was there. And that the title card, awesome. The title card with Adso sitting in, in, the, in the jacket. Yep. Not only did it, it, did it refer to what was going to happen later on in the episode, but... It was beautifully shot, like the, the beautiful red coat with the gray cat sitting. It just really stunning. And so even sits with Marsley. Like this cat yeah. is just so beautifully integral in this household. Yeah, and and you know it's funny because as you've been sick, Mary, mm-hmm. you know our cat Lumos has just been all over me, all over you. Just like there are points where I come into the bedroom and and Lumos is. Just, You're about to call Lumos Adso. I, I was going to. <laughs> And Lumos is just cat. sitting on your stomach, just yeah. there. And like, she does this cute little thing where she reaches out and like touches your face to like, are you all right? You okay, I'm here for you. Yeah, I'm here for it's you. It's amazing. You know, it's like, amazing what animals can do. And so, so I, I guess she's got a therapy cat. The thing that I've come to realize over the many years that we've been podcasting, Mary, about television shows is that television shows are not just scenes and you know, words and visuals. It's a tapestry. Mm-hmm. The The tapestry requires texture and vibrance and, and all of those pillars and all of those avenues to make this tapestry are important in different ways and they can be utilized in different manners. You can have, you know, you can be highly stylized. You can do things in, in like, um, in like the way that outlander did in season five with the, uh, with the silent movie. Like those are all parts of the tapestry, Mm -hmm. but it is a tapestry. It's not a science. It's not like you put X, Y, and Z together and you get a great show. It, everything has to come together. And part of that tapestry is little scenes like Major McDonald being allergic to cats. <sighs> Roger saying, trust me, you're going to want to be there. Mm-hmm. And Fergus knowing what to do, how to do it. And then everybody's reaction where it was just like, okay, we're hearing all this. And <laughs> yeah, you know what? I got things to do. Like, I got to go, hey, look at the time. I love it. You know, it's just, it reminds me of uh, Russ in in uh, Russ, uh, in um, in Christmas Vacation, where he's like, dad, I'm gonna, you're going to do all the lights? Look, I got homework to do. I got this to do. I got to feed the dog. And like, it, that's how it felt. And that was a beautiful 
textured moment for this show. Agreed. I, I, I was all about that. So, you know, we're here in, in the big house and we've got our core family members. We've got Jamie and Claire and we've got, you know, uh, Marceline Fergus and we'll talk about Omni in just a moment. Um, um, let's talk about Ian. Ian has a lot going on in this particular episode. Yeah. I mean, the whole title of this chapter even, uh, you know, and we start off where they are, are meeting, um, you know, the, the native Americans and for Ian to have this knowledge that his family is pretty much half made up of time travelers <laughs> who know the future and for him to be now presented with the, tragic facts of what happens yeah. to the American Indians. It's just absolutely devastating for him. Um, and then we also get the second layer knowing that he had had a child. Yeah. Um, so I think that this episode, you know, it's easy for us to be caught up in so many of the other things, but Ian's line in this episode is just so sad. And I loved that you picked actually that clip yeah. for the beginning of Jamie telling Claire this because it's so shockingly sad that Ian hasn't been able to open up all this time with his family. Yeah, it's been a what at least a year, right? Since he mm -hmm. came back. And now he knows like their little secrets. Yeah. But it's really when he's holding Anu Christians that he um tells Marcelli the like that, yeah, and like, what yeah. happened? Like, what happened to that baby? What happened to his wife? Like, we, it was it, we can pretty much infer that he had a wife. Uh, no, actually, he talked about it last season, but we could pretty much infer that he had a kid as well. I think from last season. But what happened to the wife? And what happened to the kid? It like it's not like he just up and left because he felt like it. There was something that happened, and I imagine that the show is going to be delving into that. And there's a lot, again, texture. There's a lot of layers that are playing here. Uh, mm -hmm. One, it's Ian dealing with his feeling of allegiance to Fraser's Ridge mm -hmm. and um, being part of the Mohawk. And then also how that relates to being Cherokee. On top of that, we have. Or how, how it relates to how he interacts with the Cherokee. Yeah. Union. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we have his recognition, uh, of his own family that he once had and how that relates to Fergus and what Fergus is doing to his family. And we can't forget that beautiful scene from last season where he touches the rock. Right. He can't yeah. change the past. Right. And how heartbreaking that is. And I just love that we were able to sit with him so much in these moments in this episode. Yeah, right. And, and then not only that, we also have... Uh, I mean, we kind of have a confrontation brewing between Jamie and Ian, although Jamie is 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 giving in and he's he's recommending that, you know, the, the king gives the Cherokee the, you know, the guns and the everything. Weapons, yeah. um, this is not going to bode well. No. <laughs> this is not going to bode well. You know, it's so interesting regardless. with his relationship with Ian, because you think about Jamie, who, you know, grew up um and was supposed to, you know, rule over Lollybrock and then all the things that happened to him. And he essentially became an outsider. He still had his clan and he had to hang out with the Mackenzies a great deal. But he was still an outsider. He was an outlaw um, for so much of his life. And now you look at Ian, who um, really takes his obligation and, um, I don't know, his identity as yeah. a member of the Mohawk tribe and uh, so incredibly seriously, yet he's living with his family on the ridge, yet mm -hmm. by the way he dresses and the way that he's able to communicate and his interests, um, he's really still different and off. And I think that that is something that Jamie is able to appreciate and empathize with. And yet I think it's so funny that Jamie goes to Claire to ask her, so what happens <laughs> with the Cherokee and the Mohawk and everything when Claire mostly lived in England? Yeah, but Claire has been, since Frank is no longer part of the show, yeah. Claire has been the exposition dump I'm for everybody. I'm sorry, but go to your daughter. Well, let's, before we, before we talk... <laughs> Because Mary, you are right. But before we talk about that, let's let's thank our partners okay. re real quick, and then we'll we'll get we'll get into that. Perfect. Right. 
course, this episode is brought to you by Scotland Shop. Ladies and gents, Mary right now, if you're watching this, she's wearing this beautiful weather tartan, you know, from the Mackenzie's. Like, seriously, if you're not watching, if you're listening to the, uh, the podcast, that's okay. Go to YouTube or go to Facebook <laughs> and just l- look at this weather tartan that Mary is wearing. It came from ScotlandShop.com. And the wonderful people over there, they hooked Mary up with uh, this Mackenzie one because Mackenzie is part of Mary's lineage and it's warm. It's Mary, just tell me about it. So this is the Fraser one? No, that's the weathered Mackenzie one. Oh, hello, hello. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm like even, you know, it's just, it's been so neat to be able to um, meet people from Scotland Shop and to be able to have the experiences, like you said, Blake, just to go to their website and to see the, the great knowledge that they've yeah. had of all the different tartans and fabrics. And they hooked you and up with they, this one. Like, yeah, tell to, me about this one that you got on. Oh, you it's want freaking me to awesome, you? yeah. <laughs> so obviously I have, been ill and yeah. I haven't been great and what I love about this tartan because I've got a couple of different ones in, in different um, patterns is that it's like a hug it's like a blanket <laughs> but I still feel stylish you know what I mean like I can lay it on me kind of like a lap blanket I can wear it around me to feel like I'm fancy and it is a conversation starter yes it is because people don't frequently wear tartans right. so you'll be able to kind of rock whether it's your outlander pride or your family pride and feel fabulous all the while. So go to scotlandshop.com. Be like Mary. Be cool. Start some conversations. And you can get 15% off at scotlandshop.com if you tell them you can use the Coupon code, code Outlander Outland- Cast. OutlanderCast. So 15% you. off OutlanderCast. All right, Marvin. Yes. Let's, I, because this, I had, being a history dork. Yes. Like I'm a person that does research, loves research, mm-hmm. and goes to many, many different sources to make sure that what I'm saying is true. Well, and I think it, we have to point out for listeners, what is very unique about Blake and my experience as we watch Outlander is we essentially grew up where Brie did. You know, yes. like Blake grew up right in Massachusetts. I grew up in Rhode Island, which is honestly just an hour from Boston. So uh, we grew up in states that were the original 13 colonies. We grew up not only learning, you know, American history, but the history of the places in which we were. The yeah. revolution is really hugely taught here in um, particularly at least in New England. I can't speak for the other 13 colonies, but yeah. I know for you and I having this knowledge. So that's why I'm saying Brie being raised in Boston. Yeah. You would go to Bray. Yeah. Or And uh, I hope that some of our friends who who've lived where we lived, or maybe if your country your states do the same, like I assume I assume Oregon isn't like, here we go. Yeah. Let's know everything there is to know yeah. about the revolutionary. War. But 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 on the other hand, you also have Raja. Yes. Who's a history dork. Yes. Like, yeah, like Okay, Brie, you know, she grew up in the history-loving world with Frank, and she studied some history, sure, yeah, Not whatever. Just some. But, like, Roger's a history professor. Yes. Like, that's what he does. It's like trying to go build a Mustang and say, and, and go and talk to a librarian about building a Mustang. Like, no, you, you go to Ford to yes. build a Mustang. Jamie, what are you doing, guy? What are you, what are you doing? Hard. Like. Come on. And that to me feels a little bit like lazy writing. Like I would want them to write everything down, yeah. everything down. Like, hi, we are, we are not only about to have this happen to us, but I'm gambling. Cause right yeah. now I'm hanging out right. with the red coats cause they gave us all this land, but I yeah. need to know like when to switch, who's going to be on my side. Yeah, basically I need an outline. Yes. I need a play by play. So I just think it's very interesting that, he hasn't fully capitalized on the resources of Brian Roger. Yeah, and it's listen. If if Claire has served as the exposition dump, so I get why he goes to her. I get it. But be, Jamie himself knows how important this is. He just goes to Claire and says, "Okay, what happens?" She says, "I don't know." He says, "Well, okay." Like like. Like, poor Brie in this stable is like, so yeah, Ian. Like when all your friends die, right. And what's left is reservations. And he's like, what? Like, Brie just casually says it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. What? This is how he's told? (laughs) Right. Well, she doesn't just come up and say it. No, I know. But he asks her and she tells him. But that's what I'm saying is that you've got these resources and you just wish that there'd kind of be 
if oh. Jamie takes it as seriously as he says he does, <laughs> which I believe that he does, you yes. would go to the person that you like lived it or lived, not lived it, but what w- w- has full knowledge of it. Studied it. And every- that's their expertise. Like, yes. Yeah. It, it's lazy writing. It's lazy writing. Agreed. It, it just, it is what it is. And I it's mean, okay. at least right now, I, I mean, but Jamie lives with Claire, so it's just easy to be like, "Do you know this? Was it a big thing?" So I think that I don't the mind way that the he conversation asks Claire. Happened, I think that's fine. No, but I think the way the conversation happened isn't lazy for Claire to say, "I'm sorry." I don't no, know no, 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 no. I mean that Jamie not going to Bree but, or Roger is that's lazy writing, and the reason why it's lazy writing is because that's what the show needs in order for it to continue. Jamie has to feel this this pull of anxiety about the Cherokee about backing Ian, the show needs that to function in, in this context, right? If it doesn't have that that pull, if it doesn't have that drama, then none of it matters. Like if I was Jamie, I would be like, I'm really proud of you for making matches, Brie, but where's my book? Right, like- <laughs> Are you really making the best use of your time? And let's talk about Brie making matches. What? You came back uh, to, the, to the past to tell your parents that they're gonna die in a fire- and you make matches. <laughs> There's little kids running around everywhere. You got freaking weird Malva. <laughs> <laughs> and she's so proud. And their reaction. <laughs> it was like a sh- if if there was like a Yay. living sh- if there was like a living emoji for like the shoulder shrug, that's what it would have been. They're like, so it's like Flint. <laughs> Like, we can already do that. She's like, no, no. This is a match. Swear it's different, which it is different. <laughs> it is, but their reaction was priceless. Priceless. <laughs> In, my- <laughs> In my mind. <laughs> Claire's like, we spent all that money on her college tuition. <laughs> and this is what she freaking break- brings. Even though she says, my- this gorgeous house is going to burn down. Can't childproof and you matches. Came back no. to tell me. <laughs> Spent all that money. I the hear, private tutors. It's like, hey, I hear that you're gonna die from a gunshot. Hey, here's a gun. <laughs> it's all good though. We are very proud of Bray. And I appreciate that she's trying to make things oh, that and then you add don't on the cause fact a hubbub. That her mother's making ether and like you you put that lit match near that ether. Forget about it. Your whole house like, is That's what I'm saying. I'm seeing everything. I'm like And then she's like, Oh yeah, this white phosphorus, if it touches the air, yeah, it just it happens to burn up in flames instantly. <laughs> Roger's like, okay. Oh the fire. Hey, here's an idea. Get rid of it. I'm just gonna put it. <laughs> I'm, just gonna put it I'm gonna put I'm gonna it on the mantle. Be Jimmy's toys. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. Okay, so uh, can we do another crazy thing? Yes. Dead lady comes back to life. D- I- <laughs> Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. So, you know, obviously there is a scientific explanation behind it. Yeah. And it's funny that she's like, what? That would of- happen to me. For any of you listening, oh, yeah. that's probably what's going to happen to me when I'm wicked old. Absolutely. Like, you're going to die you're in gonna, quotes. Yeah. And then you're going to be like, look up. Be like, whoa, what? And then, he, then you're going to say, what the hell kind of funeral is this? This Oh, my sucks. God. You dress me in this? Like, you got my hands over here. What kind like, of makeup is this? Where are the flowers? You know, like. What kind of food are you serving? You know, like, anybody got a meatball sub? Why is Pachelbel's Cannon playing? You know how I feel about that song. <laughs> um, how did you feel about this? I, I loved it. I thought it was cute. <laughs> I loved it because of poor Roger. Roger's <laughs> his face. This is what I'm saying. He had some outstanding moments between he and Ian. Um, it continues to have that foundation. So Roger is really trying to come into his own. So here he is doing his first, his first day on the job. Yeah. I got this. I can do a funeral. Everyone's sad. It's the first dead person here. I've got this. And then, nope. <laughs> so she comes back to life, except Claire has the bad news of like, yeah, she's back to life for like one minute. So yeah. you're going to have to do the funeral again for reals. And we're all going to see her die in front of us. Yeah. Ugh. And you know that Roger's sitting there knowing that Tom Christie's judging every single thing he oh, does. Everything. 
Like it'd be one thing to do it in just front of his family and some like other people who are on the ridge. But now he's got like, you know how you feel when your boss is coming in to observe the work you're doing? Oh, I hate that. <sighs> it's not that Tom Christie's his boss, but obviously, you know, he's feeling the pressure. So I, I thought that was wild. I found it to be totally believable. I'm so thankful Claire was there because, of course, Claire does not care that Tom Christie says she can't go into the church. She could no, oh, no. Oh, that's after that. She can't go in the church yeah. by that. By the way, I loved that too. How Jamie's like, my wife's coming into this church. She can do whatever she wants. If you say she's going to be a witch again, please stop. We've already done that many times, <laughs> many times Poor Claire. She just can't escape the witch. Yeah. No nickname. She, she's just, she can't, she can't seem to get away from that. And I, I got actually, a really good. I hope she dresses up as a witch one day at Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> she dresses up as a Sanderson sister. Yes. Yeah. Um. <sighs> All right. So let's do this. We're, I right. mean, because we're coming up on fifty six minutes here, so we we got to wrap this. Okay. Up. Let's get to the Christies. Tom Christie wants to beat his daughter. Got the boo boo hand. She does the creepy weird. And eye he go, thing. and then he goes to to Claire and says, "Okay, let's do this because of." Because I want to beat my daughter. Because of reasons. Yeah, I want to write things. (laughs) That's basically what he says. Um, This little kid, Aiden. You know, I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that. What little kid? Uh, You know, fine, 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 fine. Hold on. I'm going to give give you another outlandish. We're going to get three outlandish theories of the week today. You ready for this? I'm happy. All right, here we go. We're lucky. This kid, this kid that shows up on the doorstep. Um, at at the cabin with Bree and Raja, oh, okay. and he's just like, I'm lost. Yeah. yeah, like he ain't lost. No chance he's lost. He's going there purposely. He wants to hang out with Raja. And I know that I, that Bree and Raja like are in this good place right now. Yeah, but this don't speak. This this does not bode well. What do you mean? I'm just telling you something. Something fishy is. Why up are you worried? With this kid. Something fishy is up with this kid. Like he eats fish. I don't know. <laughs> they, were, all, they were so fisher much folk. salmon. Yeah, they are fisher folk. <laughs> I, I don't know. Just this. This don't pass the smell test. Do you think he wants the matches? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. The, like he almost kind of like how Malva is going p- poison ivy. Okay. This might be like the good son. Blake, I can't read I'm gonna all reference, these references. I'm going to reference so many mid nineties movies. I can't handle it right now. My brain. Um, no, like I'm not sure if he's, if, if, but like I, this does not feel right. Especially knowing that the mother is single. Uh-huh. And uh Bree and Roger are in a, are in a great place. Yeah. And I don't know. I just okay. something ain't right there. Something it don't pass the smell test. Okay. Okay. And don't pass the eye test okay. either. So all right, ready to get into some like tough stuff? Yes. Claire does ether again. Yes. Oh my god. It's like it's like the writer said, you know, this is gonna stir the pot if we do this in episode Let's one. Let's keep it going, baby. Let's do it in episode two <laughs> as well. Again. And really like stick it to everybody that yeah. Claire's doing this. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. I love again, I love when the show gets weird. Just give me weird all day. Just give me weird all the day. The way that that panic attack oh. was depicted on TV. Yep. Oh man, they don't show. They don't show things like that on TV. So here we are. You know, we, we complimented Outlander for its choice of showing male on male um, sexual assault and rape in back in season one. Yes. Was it fun to watch? Heck to the no. Does it happen? Yes. You know, and very few shows nowadays are able to depict anxiety attacks and panic attacks. Um, It's just not something that is talked about. And then to be able to show it and then also to show how a fully competent, amazing, brilliant person still is making poor choices for herself, which this happens all the time. Yes. There are intelligent, you know, highly educated, uh, high functioning people who make poor choices when they are dealing with whether it's PTSD or traumatic events, uh, you know, not just the, the, the PTSD, but traumatic events currently in their yeah, life or just, just putting the up high with the high anxiety stress. moments. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You just make stupid decisions. So, um, am I like super duper pumped to see where this goes? I'm worried for Claire. I'll tell you that. But I applaud the show because this is something that is not depicted on television. And yet it is something that happens to people. And I think I think that, that it's very bold for the show to make a choice like this. Yeah, yep, I agree. I I want the show to make big swings. 
I want them to take uh, big, big chances, you know, uh, big chances like the X-Files episode last season or the, the silent movie episode last season. Like, let's go big. Like you got nothing to lose. I mean, what are you, you're already, you're in your sixth, sixth season already. Like yeah. whatever, yeah. just go big. And they are. And, and I'm proud of that. And mm-hmm. I give, I give credit to um, Matt Roberts for having, having some balls to do I hate that phrase, but continue. Well, whatever. I mean, yeah. just Being having, bold. having, having brass Confident. ones. Yes. Okay. <laughs> just, he's got some brass ones. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, I, he's got, he's not afraid to take risks. And that Just is not like those some... Cherokee women. They were not afraid to take rest. <laughs> and actually, I want to talk to you about that. I, I, but first, let me just no, say this. I know. I'm going... I have been a big, big Matt Roberts critic over the years. Yes, you have. But I will give him credit. He is, he is not afraid to take risks. No. And, and with this fandom, to say... Oh, yeah. To do, you know... To say, to, I'm in the driver's seat. To huff and glue and do and all that stuff. Like, Yeah. Be like, no, this is what I'm doing. Either you like it or you don't. That's fine. But this is my story I'm telling. I mean, he is so brave because I got to tell you, when I get some bad iTunes reviews, oh, they make me feel terrible. <laughs> I can only imagine. So two bits of more texture that you brought up that made me think of this, Mary, mm-hmm. is the scene with the the, the Cherokee girls and uh, Ian and... <sighs> And uh, Ian Jamie. just sitting there laughing. Ian sitting there watches Jamie thinking that it's Claire. He wakes up. He's like, why are there two women in my bed? Ian, what, what is happening? Like, mm-hmm. And then Ian's laughing. He's like, yeah, you're, 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 you're taking way too much pleasure out of this. Don't say a word. I, yes. And the, they're doing the translation. And, and the girls are saying that, you know, little Jamie is not so little. And like... I loved every ounce of that scene. That Agreed. is more texture to our giant tapestry. Agreed. What did you like about that so much? I, this is like very much out of the book. And I loved reading it in the book as a Jamie and Ian relationship. And I loved watching it on screen. I love having these moments with Jamie and Ian. Yes. And I do love that Ian was just giggling. and Oh, that was awesome. Having to translate for Jamie. So great. <laughs> I love that the, the like essentially the episode opens on that essentially. And I love how Ian's like, yeah, they're really thankful that they're not going to have your kid because red hair would yeah. not go <laughs> like over well. All of this stuff, <laughs> all of this texture is just so important. It yes. builds out the world. It builds out the characters. And yes. by the way, it shows you where it, it, it's not just for fun. Funsies, by the way, this isn't just for funsies. This shows you a baseline of where Jamie and Ian are and how far they're going to travel throughout this episode. Yes. Not only that, but the rest of the season. Yes. This, like I said, every ounce of writing, every mm-hmm. bit of uh, directing, everything has to have a purpose. Yes. This isn't for funsies. Mm-hmm. This is on purpose, and I love it. And another bit of texture uh, layering here mm-hmm. the Cherokee referring to Jamie. As Bear Killer. Yes. Fun little callback, uh, just a recognition and validation Mm -hmm. of season four, I believe it was, and how that has kind of traveled throughout the years. Uh, Awesome, awesome bit of texture for our tapestry. Really great stuff. I know I keep driving this analogy home or this metaphor home, but it's true. Think about it. Think about what you're watching in terms of how it's created, the way that it's created, and why it's created the way it is. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you'll have a better appreciation for what is being shown to you, not just, ooh, is this the book? Or, ooh, is this fun? Like, no, 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 why is it the way that it is? Mm -hmm. That's what we're here at Mary and Blake Media to do for you. All right, you got anything else about this episode, my love? No, but I'm ready to get to our official outlandish. Oh, let's get to the next outlandish theory of the week. But before we do... This one is actually brought to us by another sponsor. Yes, this is brought to you by Weebox. Mary, I know you love yourself some I Weebox. I love Weebox. And I have to thank um, a lot of our friends at the Outlander Cast Clan Book Club and the Beehive that is within there for gifting me some Weebox. Um, love while we went through our miscarriages. Yes. It's just been such a beautiful um fun monthly gift that I love. So for those of you who don't know, We Box was born from a passion to spread Scottish joy and bring their glorious land a wee bit closer. Whether you are a Scot abroad or of Scottish heritage or just dream of visiting one day, We Box is for you. So what do you get inside this gorgeous purple box? You're going to get five bonnie gifts and treasures worth more than the cost of the box, often exclusive and can't be bought outside of Scotland. 
They um, are, there's often a delicious treat. Um, and as I said, you can't even buy these things frequently outside of Scotland. They're just made, you know, they're purchased and made from Scottish purveyors yeah, like over did, there. Didn't you get like, um, you know, like a tartan bag or something? Yeah, it's, yeah, my, yeah. it's the bag that I've been using yes, yeah. all the time. I absolutely love it. Yeah, we've get, like, gotten like cute little shortbreads and they'll do things frequently <clears throat> based upon holidays too. So, you know, we had items that were specific towards having a Burns Night dinner and we've had things for the new year yeah, they're for all Yule themed. and... Yeah, and it's just been so cute. Like one of the things that I've been using, recently using is um, a Highland Cow um, hot water bag, like oh, the hot yeah. water bottle kind of bag. Your face, because <laughs> I've been having infections in my face. Thank you, yeah. uh, situation. So, but like, but here I am, sad, aching, and I'm like, oh, I could really use something warm on my face. And I remember I have from the wee box this Scottish Highland Cow like hot water <laughs> bag that you know. So it's just little things like that, whether they're elegant i've um i've even gotten um jewelry holders from it you're going to get something that you know will be a little fun gift for you each time so, so go yes. to webox.com check that out you don't want to miss it it's a lot of fun all right marvin let's do the last outlandish theory the third outlandish theory of the day here we go yes well we got the christie's Yes, we do. And every time I think of the Christies, I think of the weird people from the show Servant. Like that's what that's mm-hmm. what I think I'm watching. I can appreciate is that. Servant. And <clears throat> all I could think of is <sighs> Marsley has this baby and the baby is suffering from dwarfism. I, I wouldn't say suffering. Well, not suffering, but it has it has, it has dwarfism. Yeah, Sorry. Yes. It has dwarfism. The Christies there is Zero point zero chance the Christies are okay with this, and there is no way they're going to be accepting of this. This to me feels like a a, a bad omen from for uh, the the folks at Fraser's Ridge in terms of how the Christies are going to interpret mm. this this birth. And uh, I think this is going to be a major point of contention, one that will help fuel. Uh, much of the conflict conflict coming forward. Interesting. That's my sense of everything. And together we collectively say, interesting. Market zero, dude. It's going to happen. Mark me. Please hang up and try again. So that's it, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to us. Mary, you got anything else? Any closing takes? I do, I do. I wanted to let all of you know, if you're a book fan, of Outlander. We wanted to make sure that you knew about uh, something very special going on. We've mentioned before the Beehive and our Outlander cast staff member, Angela Hickey. So inside the Facebook group, the Outlander cast clan book club, um, that is where a lot of, of obviously book discussions happen. So this weekend she is going to be breaking down um, things that are alike or different when it comes to the books and what has been shown so far, uh, whether it's character description, structure, book lines, moments, all these different little things. Um, She's also going to be sharing insights from Diana and the producers on the current adaptation. So the Beehive adaptation chats are going to be taking place every other Saturday afternoon and we'll be covering two episodes each. So it's 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern um, and it's going to be about these two particular episodes that have already aired. So make sure that you're in the Outlander Cast Clan book club Mm -hmm. if you are a book reader and you'd like to be part of that amazing discussion. So thanks again to Angela Hickey for keeping our book reader um entertained and allowing a safe space because this is a spoiler free podcast yes. because Blake hasn't read the book so I appreciate you and all of you so very much for continuing to further the conversation all right you ready to close this show out yes I am all right I got something special for you Marvin are you ready oh, thank you re- you. are you ready for this I am Taking forever. The, the the lead in here. Okay. Hold on, let me skip. Well, as we do, I wanted to remind you all that Blake and I are very active on social media. You can find us by searching the Mary and Blake pages, even though we do have our Outlander cast handles. I do want to make sure that you know that we are particularly active on our Mary and Blake handles. So make sure you find us there. If you ever wanted to give us some listener feedback, you can email us at maryandblakemedia at gmail.com. We also have um, a phone 
phone call way that they can call us, correct? Uh, yeah, but we're not really using it. So just oh. the, do, if you want to leave a voicemail, you can. Just go to maryandblake.com. Click on the contact button and you'll see voicemail. Okay. Just click voicemail and you'll be able It's You just record it right from your phone. It gets sent right to us. If we have brought joy into your life and you would like to help support this mom and pop podcast, you can. All you need to do is go to jointhenerdclan.com. We are not a huge podcast conglomerate. Honestly, the money that you are able to donate for as little as $2 a month truly goes towards the cost of the podcast and the website fees and making all of this possible. Hold on. Oh, Oh, you win. Oh, you win. Oh. Tell us how you really feel, boys. Oh, I'm feeling like massively right now, I'll tell okay. you that. Okay, well, on that note, <laughs> until next time, lads and lasses, I'm Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and, and I you, love you and McGregor. I, same with me. <laughs> and you have been listening to Outlander Cast. <laughs>